Hey everyone, Random Randy here, coming to you from the new and improved mom cave. This is Yarn Talk, a normally weekly <laughs> video series about knitting and crocheting to give you your recommended dose of fiber arts. If you're worried that your fiber intake may be a little bit on the low side, feel free to subscribe to the channel so that you can get more videos containing awesome projects like these to keep your hands and your heart full. It has been about two weeks since I did an actual yarn talk. I did have a crochet with me last week because I really hadn't gotten a chance to do very much yet. Usually I have more of an opportunity to finish things, but lately I've been putting a lot of bigger projects on my plate, so I haven't been getting as many things done. So even though making a lot of progress on these bigger projects, I feel like I don't have as much to show. Yeah. <laughs> so I have two finished things, which are not really sizable finished things in my opinion, but whatever it's better than nothing I guess right so I'm gonna start off with finished stuff I do have a few active things in progress and some more yarn that I dyed and some yarn dyeing issues that I've run into that I'm gonna share with all of you people who are taking an interest in dyeing yarn after seeing me do it and that it's really not as super difficult as it seems like it might be so I'm gonna start off with finished stuff first one is a knitted project what? I know, right? So, the knitted dish towel that I am making a set of them for a friend of mine who asked for them. She didn't set a specific date, they just recently moved into a new place and have some different decor. She wanted a few knitted towels, so I was like, yeah, I can do it, especially if there's no deadline because knitting takes forever. So, this is the dish towel. And as you can see, it is, it's a different shape than I intended for it to be. And it has the little loop for hanging. So rather than saying that it was a mistake, you can probably see what I did wrong. I'm calling it a design choice. And I am going to make the second one have the same oops in it so that they'll turn out pretty much the same. Here. Once I hit this spot where it was about the same size and then I finally started to shrink it down again, I was supposed to be decreasing two stitches per row. And somehow I was only decreasing one and then adding one back in on the other side so it stayed the same size longer than it should have. And by the time that I noticed that it was no longer becoming pointed as it should have been, I was like, you know what? That's like over an hour worth of work. Um, I'm not gonna rip that out, no way. So here we are having this, which is still very much a towel. It is made out of cotton. This is, I love this cotton. I have no idea what the colorway is, but I do have the second one started, but I haven't worked on it very much because as I said, there's no, no deadline on it. So I'm thinking I'll probably get it done in the next month-ish. It is on my list of stuff to finish. That way I have it off of my plate and I just use a little brown button here. So I will link the free pattern to this in the description box below the video. It was actually a free pattern on Craftsy. It's not super, super in depth, but it's also pretty basic. So if you wanna do something that's beyond just a regular dishcloth and you're learning to knit, doing this pattern the proper way, <laughs> not the way I oopsed it up, could turn out quite nice. The other thing that I have, I think when I did the crochet with me video, I was working on this and it is just a slouchy dark gray hat. I actually have to tell the girl who asked me to make it that I have it finished because I've had it done for a few days now and I haven't gotten back to her about it. As you can see, it's quite, pronounced slouch in the back. Nice and comfy. Snug here, but not too tight. And I made this with Hirschner's whatever this dark gray was. It's all acrylic. 
So that's all I have for finished things. I did also have a zero lovey that went out for an order, and I've had a few skeins of yarn go out. And my Hangetsu shawl is finally up in my shop, both on Etsy and I have it on Ravelry. Sales have been pretty good with that. I've seen a lot of people posting it on social media, and it seems like the biggest thing for most people is that they're so excited about the ability to do it in different weights of yarn because of the way that the stitch count is done, that they've got it on the go in three or four different weights of yarn, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to show you the other stuff I've been working on. So I guess you could call this kind of a finished-ish object. This is just run-of-the-mill granny square. But this is going to be what I'm calling my spicy granny top. <laughs> I'm not quite sure how I'm going to join the two together yet because there are really honestly so many different options for ways that you can put two granny squares together to make a top. But I'm thinking that I'm going to join them here-ish and then make a neckline. But this is how it looks up close. This is the Hirschner's Spice Yarn which is a worsted eight yarn that's variegated and one of their holiday yarns, Halloween holiday yarn. It's black with a silver metallic in it. So that's the one full square. And I've just been kind of chipping away at the second one. This has been my TV viewing project for the last couple of days. Well, this was this morning, actually. Went from this block all the way up to here this morning when I was catching up with all of my social media stuff first thing in the morning. And I'm doing that with a K hook or a 6.5 millimeter hook. The only other thing that I have actively going right now is actually another pattern I'm designing. It is very much a work in progress that is probably going to take me the better part of a month-ish to finish because it's a really, really long project. So if you follow me on Instagram, you may have already seen a few pictures of what I'm working on for it. And I can grab the hook and not unravel my work here. This is going to look crazy huge, but bear with me. This is going to be a duster jacket, which is about a calf length crochet jacket. I'm not sure if I'm going to do sleeves for it yet or not. I don't know if I want to do sleeves. I think I might just want to leave it sleeveless. But this is made. As you can see, there's a lot of different stitches going on here if it'll focus. I'm not sure how well it will with the funky light going on because the sun's right outside that window. But it starts off here and as you can see in this bottom portion, it kind of looks like the faces from Skulls. And up here we've got some of my favorite pyramid stitch and up here I'm doing some crossed stitches. So the way that it's working up, I'm this is actually a DK weight yarn, so it's a three, light, sport, whatever you want to call it. So I've actually got three bags of this from Ice Yarns. And this is their Alara yarn, which is a 50% cotton, 50% acrylic. Each one of these is a 50 gram ball, which is about 140 meters. And like I said, it's a three yarn. So, as I was saying before childless interrupticus occurred, 50% cotton, 50% acrylic, and there were eight of these in a bag. I have actually two bags of black and one bag of this red color, which I love. So I am calling this pattern the Dark Druid Duster. And it's inspired by a lot of things from watching the Shannara Chronicles. If you're on my personal Facebook, you've seen me kind of geek out about it a lot in the last week or so. I just finished watching season two on Netflix, so um, it's still very fresh in my mind. But the way that it's working up, each section I figured is... So 
the black section is about four inches and the red section worked out to be about three because of stitch choices. I'm using a 5.5 millimeter hook for that, but I pretty much wanted to find something that I could use the better part of, if not all of, both of these bags of yarn. I'm looking for things that are going to eat up yarn because I have so much yarn. It's ungodly. So, with this being a cotton acrylic blend, I thought it would be perfect for summertime. And I very much miss the kind of more goth aesthetic that I used to have in my life. So I think having something like this that is light that I can throw on just with a plain black tank top underneath so I don't look naked running around <laughs> will be awesome for the summertime. And it'll be good for when we're down by the water for just a little bit of coverage from that breeze because if you've ever been by a big body of water, it gets quite chilly near it. So that's the other thing that I've been working on, and like I said, it's going to take me the better part of a month to finish it because I'm working out how to bring it in. I want to do it as close to all-in-one piece as possible. I don't want to have to sew parts onto it. So what I'm planning on doing is I'm going to bring it up to about here, then I'm going to decrease on one side for the shoulder catch over here, decrease on one side for the shoulder, catch it back on, finish up the back, and then just sew the shoulders together and call it good. Probably have a tie in the front too because I don't, I don't do buttons. Clasps would be kind of cool. Maybe one of those toggle clasps, that might be kind of cool. I don't know though. It's still kind of forming in my brain as I'm working on it, so we'll see how that turns out. And aside from those things, that's all the yarny stuff I have really, unfortunately, for the past two weeks to show. Aside from two skeins of yarn that I dyed just the other day, and just in case you're somebody who doesn't watch the Vitas, and I have them right at hand anyway, I'll show you these other ones I've got because I can't remember when I showed them because I haven't been doing daily, daily vlogs as much as I wanted to. It's kind of become more of an every other day thing. I feel like I'd rather be producing quality content than just shoving a video out every day, especially when I'm having a day like I've had the last couple of days and the last thing I need to be is in front of a camera. Yeah. So, yarn that I've dyed in this past week-ish these ones, as I said, I did show them a couple videos ago, but I don't remember when, and I'm not going to go through and watch right now to find out. So this is a sparkle sock base. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see the Stellina in there or not, maybe. But it is speckled with a spruce green and olive green and kind of a dark chestnut brown. This is a fingering weight yarn. It's somewhere in the realm of 400-ish yards. There are two of them. You need to get these put up in the shop. But I'm calling this one Wrong Side of Heaven, inspired by the Five Finger Death Punch song. And these two are also speckled. It's kind of shades of periwinkle blue and salmon pink. There's a lot more coloration down here on the bottom of this one, so you can see it really, really well if I can hold it close enough. This is also on the Sparkle Sock base, and this one is called Glycerin, inspired by the song by the band Bush. Because as I mentioned, I was in a mopey music mood that day. And, as my mother <laughs> brought up, I need to figure out a color scheme for a yarn that will be named Righteous Side of Hell, because it only makes sense if you've ever heard the song. If not, you should go listen to it, but I wouldn't recommend the video unless you want to cry. I still can't watch the video, even though the song has been out for years now. But in the song, part of the lyrics are, I'm on the wrong side of heaven and the righteous side of hell. So, if this is wrong side of heaven, 
it only makes sense <laughs> to have one also titled Righteous Side of Hell. Anyway, moving on. I experimented yesterday with dip dyeing, so I have my first two gradient yarns. These are the sport weight yarn that I got, and unfortunately with this one, one of the ties actually snapped when I picked it up. So this one is a tangled mess. I'm gonna have to just put it in a cake because it is a mess, but anyway. So this is just with black dye. As you can see, this is the top part that got the least amount and it is a very light gray. Going into a darker gray, goes all the way down to black. This is a sport weight yarn. I do not have one of the ball bands with me, but I should be posting these up in my shop sometime soonly, especially since I also have the sparkly ones to post. So this is the black gradient yarn, which I really like the way it looks. And if it turns out that it's way too much of a pain in the butt to wind it into a cake, I am probably going to just cut my losses because I'll probably have to cut the yarn and tie it to get it back together. And I'll just keep this one for myself. So that's one. And the other one is this one, which started off with this dark, it was supposed to be red. Vermilion is a shade of red, dear people who make jacquard acid dyes. So this part looks reddish-ish, but it still has quite a bit of pink to it. So were I to make one again where I wanted it to be more red, I would probably add a little bit of dark to this because it is too pink for my personal taste. So started here. Went through here, as you can see, it gets progressively lighter and lighter and lighter until it is a very, very light pastel pink down at this end. So although I'm not a fan of the fact that the tie snapped on the black one or really the shades in this one, I do like the process and I liked the way that it all kind of blended. I do like how that turned out, so something that I'll be experimenting with occasionally, but probably not something I would make a super big thing out of. These will also be going up in my shop at some point. I plan on making a second one to go with each of these and then some other coordinating things and a few of the other colorways that I had that I only had one of that I know people are going to want more of, which is why I only dyed half of the bear yarn in the first place. So, fun thing I discovered in regards to dyeing yarn is that cotton yarn does not take to acid dyes the same way that an animal-based fiber does. So, I actually had to, I just ordered a tie-dye kit, a big party size tie-dye kit so that I wouldn't have to worry about the soda ash soak and all that beforehand, which should be enough to dye all of the bare cotton yarn that I have. So there's a reason that a lot of indie dyers don't offer cotton yarn because it requires a whole separate type of dye to get it to work effectively. I don't have it here with me because it was such a disappointment, <laughs> but I was hoping to dye some cotton red and came up with an entire skein of cotton that's about this color pink right here. Yeah, and that's with adding extra acid, changing the heat amount, and several other things, and it just it wasn't, wasn't gonna go and I didn't want to totally fry it and make it unusable in an attempt to get it to work and looked it up and oh, surprise, it's a slightly different process for cotton. I mean, you can still do all the same types of techniques, but you do it with cold water rather than hot water and heat. So that's something that once that arrives in the next few days, hopefully I'll be able to get the cotton dyed up. I'd like to do a few more skeins of the sport weight tonight. I want to get a few more things listed in the Etsy shop. 
And I guess that's really it for all the yarny stuff. So if that was all you were here for, thanks for sticking around because I know this has been kind of rambly and all over the place. But that's how the past few weeks have been for me. So this is going to be just a little bit of chit chat stuff, I suppose. Main reason that I don't have a lot of yarny stuff done is because I have spent so much time getting <laughs> all of the nonsense with my desk taken care of and now that it's all set up I am sorting through all of my other craft supplies. I have a bunch of stuff that I'm going to be getting rid of whether it's through donations, selling, if it's just unusable junk. I'm also reorganizing my bedroom so all of my husband's stuff will be taking up less space in a better place because I'm, I'm an adult woman and have zero space in the closet for any of my clothing <laughs> because his gear takes up so much room, which is no fun. So that's going to be done. He should be home in a few weeks, so I don't have a lot of time to get all of that organized. So I've kind of come up with a long-term-ish list of goals and planning to knock out at least one of those goals every other day so that I don't wait until the last second and go, oh crap, there's all this stuff that I wanted to get done and I didn't get any of it done. Ah! And <laughs> if you're a procrastinator like me, then you know that although you can perform quite well under the pressure of the last minute, sometimes it's better to plan ahead and not do that. So, working on that, today I got the lawn mowed, I got the dishes done already, I yesterday started a toy purge, and if you don't know what a toy purge is, I have talked about it in a few videos before, pretty much it's just going through all of the excessive quantities of possessions that my kids have that are things that can be played with but that haven't been played with in forever things that they haven't asked for in forever, going through all of the toys that are broken and tossing them. It's pretty much just decluttering their playthings so they will actually play with them instead of taking the bins of stuff and just dumping the bins all over and then leaving them there because there's so much stuff they don't, they don't really want to play with any of it because it's just, it's overwhelming to have that much stuff. Which is why I'm so glad that now I have space in here and things are organized because it's not as overwhelming. I can look at things at a glance and go, oh, there that thing is, or hmm, what yarn do I want to work with next? And I can just look and see it and pick something instead of having to sift through 500 bins that are stuffed under everything. And don't get me wrong, I do still have two bins that are underneath this portion of my desk right now. However, I emptied out two bins and actually have all of my partly finished project bags up over in my library with door shelf that I got and have all of the berry yarn taking up space on the bottom shelf. So I'm going to be going through and assessing things that I need to frog because I'm never going to finish them and I need to accept that there are some of those things I'm never going to finish. And there are some other things that I really do want to finish that I just recently found and went, oh my god, there that is. I haven't seen that in months. <laughs> so, because it is spring cleaning time, it is just, it's that time of the year. And you can tell it's spring because the sun has been out for a day and a half now, so it's dry enough to mow, so the lawnmowers are driving by. Anyway. So if you have some clutter in your life, I hope that you can find a way to declutter and de-stress and bring a little bit of organization to the chaos that is all of our lives collectively. And I think that's it for me for this week. So thank you so much everybody for watching and I will catch you in the next video. Bye.